Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode we're using Topaz Mask AI. I've been looking on the internet lately and I see a lot of really cool images of birds and I'm not a bird photographer so I'm using a stock image here but the images I've been seeing have had like super soft blurry backgrounds with birds and it looks really cool. So I thought in this image this would be a great image to really blur that background. Now it's already blurred out from the camera but I thought we'll blur it even more with Mask AI and you'll see it's going to look really cool here. And uh, hey and by the way if uh, you're enjoying my tutorials uh, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. This way you'll be notified each time I upload a new tutorial, and it really helps out my channel, and I appreciate that. But this image starts out like this, and we're going to end up looking like this, all with the power of Mask AI. So without any further ado, let's get started. I'm starting out here in Photoshop. Now, I'm not going to duplicate my background layer because when I launch Mask AI, it's going to do that for me. So I'm just going to come up to Filter and Topaz Labs, and we will launch Mask AI and get started. Now, first off, you're going to notice that my screen is has like this green overlay over it, and you notice I have this blue circle here, which is my brush tool. Now, uh, Topaz Mask AI works with a tri-map system, meaning it has three different colors that it maps out your image with, and you'll see that here in a second. It's very simple, and it works very efficiently and easily. But blue is basically the compute area, the area that you want uh, Mask AI to really think about and compute those areas, the harder areas for it to mask out. Green means that you want it to keep those areas, and red means you want it to get rid of the area. Mask AI gives you a lot of tools to make your masking very simple and easy for you. And two of those tools are the subject selection tool and the sky selection tool. Now, I don't have a sky here, but I have a subject. So let's try subject. Let's click on that and it'll auto detect my subject. And it does a pretty good job. Now, it's generally not perfect, but it's a good starting point for you. Okay, so I need to fix like this area on the blue heron right here. Missed a little bit of its feather here. Maybe a little bit right there. Now this foreground here, I want to keep this foreground area here. So what I'm going to do is just paint around here loosely like so. And I'm going to use a paint bucket tool, and I'll show you that here in a second, to fill this all in. Again, these are the little tools that, uh, or I shouldn't say little tools, or big tools that, that uh, Mask AI give us to uh, make our job simpler. Now, I want to keep all this uh, beach area here. I guess this is maybe some sand or whatever in the front here with these sticks growing up out of it. Probably not sand. Maybe it's dirt. But what I want to do is, so what I'm going to do is draw a line across the edge here because I want to keep all this area right here. So right now this area is red, meaning that Mask AI is going to get rid of this area here, but I want to keep it. So I'm going to use a bucket tool. And just click on our bucket tool right here. And we have three buckets, again, blue, green, and red for the three colors, okay? Again, compute. Let's click a compute uh, bucket here. And I want to keep all this area in here. Now, I missed that little bit of green, but that's okay because I want to keep that. But I want this area to be all green down here. So I'm going to get a green bucket and fill this in like so. So it's going to keep this. It's going to compute this area. And all around the edge of the blue heron, and it's going to get rid of the background. Whoops, I see I missed this area right here, so let me get a brush, a keep brush, or not a keep brush, but a compute brush, and just paint right here, because I wanted to compute that area right there. Now, I have uh, three different options to compute the mask, and my next step is to compute, compute the mask now. I have three mask modes, AI for artificial intelligence, uh, translucent, and contrast. And you have this little question mark here. If you hover over it, it says AI is a general purpose AI masking. Translucent, translucent is a special AI model for fabrics and semi-transparent non-reflective materials. And contrast, simple masking using image contrast detection, same as Remask 5 was. Okay, so that's good for areas like, you know, buildings, like skylines and things like that. Simple masking jobs. And next, all I need to do is... Click Compute after I've determined which uh, mode I want to use, and I want to use the AI mode. So let me go ahead and click Compute Mask, and in a few seconds here, it'll compute that mask. And just like that, there's our mask. Now, the image on the left is the original image. Now, you still see the tri-map on it. Usually what I like to do is shut the tri-map off so I can actually see the image, because that's my original, which I'll be using to compare to the image on the right, which is my masked image. Now, on this image... 
I want to blur the background. This is a really cool technique, especially when you're doing bird photography and you have a like a water background like this or, you know, like some nice birds in, in a tree and you just really want to blur that background out and set that bird apart, which is a, it's a really cool technique. Now let's turn our attention up here uh, where we can work with our backgrounds. We can use no background, just the transparent backgrounds we see here. We can blur the background, we can add color to the background, or replace the background with an image, which is really nice. So we have all these different options. And these are some of the really great features of Mask AI that I really enjoy. But we want to blur the background for this technique, so let's click on Blur. And right away, you see the background blur. But look how cool that looks. You know, compared to the image on the left, to the image on the right. And let's give it some more strength here. And on something like this, I think I really want to blur that background a lot. Maybe even up to 100%. Let's take it up to 100%. Isn't that cool? See how it really just makes that bird just pop out for you. Now, I'm generally not a big fan of totally blurring out a background, but I think with bird photography like this, it really works well. What do you think? Hey, let me know in the comment section below what you think. Do you like this technique? I mean, I've seen this all over the internet and I think it's, it's pretty cool. So I wanted to show you how to do it today, but let's leave it at full blur right there. And I really like this, but let me show you something here. You have you can do many different things to the background, like you can adjust the exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, temperature, saturation. You could do a lot here, but you can also see where it says adjust right now it's on background. You can also adjust your foreground, which is really good, especially when you're like adding like another image for the background. You can, you know, match those two images up by using these controls. So, so it looks real and it doesn't look faked out. So that's, that's very important to have these different controls. But for instance, what if I wanted to darken this background on this bird here? Like I can darken it like this. And I'm going to show you another reason why I'm actually doing this because I don't really want to darken the background, but you could. You know, you might want to just darken a little bit or you, you know what? You might want to lighten it a little bit like that. That looks pretty cool too. But I'm going to show you a little trick here. If you darken it a little bit, you can see if you missed anything. Like if you look right around this feather right here, you can see I missed a little spot here and maybe around the edge of the bird here. I don't think these things would show up, but you could fix these by just taking this compute brush watch and I can just go like this. Give it a second and it'll fix itself. Get rid of that, see that? And I can fix this little feather right here. Just like so. So it's a real easy way to fix things and, and it'll point out if there's any issues in the mask. So I just wanted to point that out to you. But also it's good for adjusting the background. So I'm just going to uh, double click exposure and get that back to the center. And don't forget you have things like temperature, tint, saturation. Like you can give that background more saturation if you wanted to, which is kind of nice. I think I'm going to leave it just the way it is or hey, you could desaturate it if you want to. If you want to reset any slider, uh, just double click the uh, name of the slider, not the actual slider itself, but the name. But there it is. I mean, a couple little uh, touch-ups on the bird we had to do. But as you can see, Mask AI generally does a pretty good job. Now, there are different uh, images that I've worked with where Mask AI can be a little tricky. And I'm going to give you some upcoming tutorials where I show you ways that you can um, work with uh, tough, tough images where you're having masking problems. And when I'm really having a tough masking problem, I will definitely use Photoshop to fix the mask up. Okay. But I mean, I always use Photoshop to be honest with you when I'm working with Topaz products, because I like to work with Topaz as a plugin. So I'm always going to have that Photoshop to back me up, but you can, you don't have to have Photoshop. You can do it right in here, but sometimes you'll get a challenging image where you might not be able to totally get it looking hundred percent right where you would need Photoshop, but stay tuned for some upcoming videos on that, uh, on tough masks. Okay. But there we go. And if you look at the image on the left, that's before. And if you look at the image on the right, that's after, I think that turned out really nice. And I think we're done and I'll show you how to save it out and bring us back into Photoshop. But I want to point something out before you go back into Photoshop or leave Mask AI if you're using it as a standalone, make sure it's, it's right. Okay. If you're using Photoshop, I mean, you can't return back to Mask AI and fix it uh, in Mask AI because at this point in time, Topaz software does not work as a smart object. In other words, you can't convert it to a smart filter and then come back and re-edit it. I hope they do that in the future. 
And again, as I said, you can fix things in Photoshop if you need to. So make sure it's right before you save it out. Now to save it out, what you need to do is click apply. Now you're going to get some options here. Do you want to apply image as a transparent? And that would be sending it back into Photoshop without this blurred background, but just with a layer mask that it is made for you, okay? Or you can send it back as a composite. Now a composite is this image with the blurred background on it, and that is what we want. So what we need to do next is click composite, and that'll send us back into Photoshop with the blurred background. I think everything looks good, so I'm clicking composite, and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. And here we are. So here's our before image. And here's our after image. So what do you think? I love that blurred background. I think it really works well with uh, bird photography or what? Avian photography, I think it is. I'm never good at these names, but uh, I think it's avian photography. But there you go. Well, there it is. This, uh, I think it's a great blue heron. We blurred out the background. Uh, turned out really well. And I Mask AI did a great job, especially around all those sticks. It, it's it's amazing how it works, and I really, really enjoy it. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, leave please leave those in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And that way, every time I upload a new tutorial, you will be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy Editing.